When dynamically building a select list and then needing to select a specific item, as when doing server-side validation, the process is not difficult, but the logic can be daunting. This video attempts to show how to implement this type of process. As you can see, the creation of the select HTML markup using PHP currently exists in a controller. The HTML is stored in a single PHP variable and then used when the view is included. This code must be altered when using server-side validation. Step 1 is to leave the function call to get the raw data from the database into, in the controller. Step 2 is to select the HTML building code, copy it, and then comment it out for now. The third step is to open the view where the select will be used. In this video, it is in a Add New Product view. Step 4. We will create a PHP code block at the top of the view and make sure that there are no empty spaces or blank lines between the code block and the HTML doc type declaration. Step 5 is to paste the code into the code block. Now we will begin to edit the pasted code. There is an existing for each loop inside of the code block. Move inside of the for each loop and then we will break the existing code into two separate string. The first string builds the option element through the declaration of the value attribute. The second string will contain the greater than symbol to close the opening option tag, the actual display text, and the closing option tag. We'll create space between them for two separate if tests. The first test checks to see if a variable exists that will contain the value of a particular category item. If the result is true, then the second if is checked to see if the variable holding the value matches a particular value stored in our array of values. If the result is true, then the HTML attribute of selected is added to the HTML variable where the select list is stored. Be sure to note the spaces around the word selected. They make sure that the attributes in the HTML element are separated from one another. By doing this, if server-side validation returns a value for the select list, that particular value is shown as being the selected item in the list when the form is displayed in the browser as shown in the video. I hope this short video helps you to see how a dynamic select list can be kept up to date even when building it dynamically. 